at that moment bible looks like a newspaper the only thing that will keep you still believing is if you met god i told you that the cry of the cross is it is finished it cannot finish at calvary and continue in your house uh, you see a time we come in one person or another person's life when all the knowledge you have we face trial in that time the only thing that keeps you is the encounters you had no you didn't hear me when you are looking at something and your world has fallen apart everything is upside down and life is telling you do you still believe at that moment bible looks like a newspaper the only thing that will keep you still believing is if you met god if you had an encounter and in every man's life you can't guarantee whether your day will come or not you don't know who will face what you're not hearing you don't know who will face what will you still stay with Jesus when I was a kid in the church we are in there was this guy he was the richest guy in church I'm very liberal when I mean liberal oh my god I'm talking about years ago when I was a child this guy was the richest the cars were there and very liberal he had this very amazing young wife serving a church very excited and then one morning I had my father crying my father because my father was his friend are you with me they are not in the same church but were his friend I had my father cry so I said what is it and he said, he was coming from on nature the day before. And his car ran under the trailer. That picture stayed in my mind as a kid. How can a good man like this go like that? But it's not me that is the issue. The issue is that wife. Who didn't know her whole story will change overnight? How will she continue to follow Jesus? At that moment when everything has collapsed, when everything, the money is no longer going to be there. There's no husband. There is nothing. God, are you real? At that moment, Bible doesn't work again. The only thing that works at that moment is did you meet Jesus? If you didn't meet him, you will argue yourself out of grace. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? There are other times that for younger people here, you are standing with a man that is much more educated than you. And the man sits down before you and begins to scatter the Bible. Many of you sent your children to school. I, I'm particularly concerned with those who send their children abroad. This professor says this, says this, says this, says this, and all of that. And because a young man hasn't studied the Bible and doesn't know Bible history, doesn't know so much about science to do that, when I teach on intelligent uh, faith, many of them don't know what we're talking about. So the man takes them through the, makes the Bible look irrelevant, makes the Bible look like it's a nonsense, it's a fairy tale. He goes there, goes there, and you don't have an answer to them because you never studied there. 
Many of us have spent time studying it. But you didn't. So you are looking at the man and the man makes you a Christianity here, yeah, yeah? It looks as though everything in the Bible is nonsense, it's trash. And while that is going on, the only thing you know at that moment is, I may not have an argument against him, but a man with experience is not at the mercy of a man with argument. I don't, I don't understand his grammar and his explanation, but I know what I know. I know what I touched. I know when God met me. I, am I talking to somebody here today? I, you see, do you know why the Catholic Church at the early stage of Pentecostalism couldn't wipe us out? You don't know the Catholic fought us? You don't know Anglican fought us? Do you know in many communities, the moment to get born again, they exercise you? Please talk to me. They do all kinds of things to stop you. They fought. You know why they couldn't stop us? Because of one thing, Holy Ghost baptism. Listen, the day you began to talk in tongues, you know nobody taught you this language. You know something, something happened to me. I am not in doubt I met something. No matter what they say, their argument, whatever, you just keep saying, I know what I know. Something happened to me. Something touched me. Brothers and sisters, any man without an encounter, the Christianity ends halfway. You need to encounter God without it. You will laugh in church until one day the pastor offends you. Until one day you hear one scandal. Until one day you hear something preached on TV. Until one day something like this happened. And then suddenly everything about Christianity ends for you. Don't you know some people that we are in church excited until their business fell? And they sit down at home now until one pastor insulted them. They don't go to church now. Listen, listen. Nobody that truly encounters Jesus ever backslides. Those who got explanation and we invited them to church, when trouble comes, they go away. But the people that said, I saw something. Hey, Peter said, we have not followed cunningly divine faith. He said, we were eyewitnesses. We were with him when he was transfigured. He said, no, whatever you are talking about nonsense, we know what we saw. John said, what our eyes saw, what our hand touched, what we tested of the word of life, that's what we declare. Some people are preaching the gospel because they can read book. You know, you know, do you know the problem with the church today? I'll tell you the problem with the church today. We choose preachers based on who has a rhetorical skill. We don't ask who encounter something. So when people go to Bible school and come out and their mouth is sharp, we put them on the pulpit. But none of them knows anything about where we went. No, you are not hearing me. They have no encounter. When life pushes them, listen, I mentor pastors and I know what I'm talking about. In this life, I've counseled thousands of pastors one-on-one. -on -one. Believe me, you meet a lot of pastors who are so confused. All the things they studied is not working. And they don't have an encounter. Why did you start church? Uh, my former boss wasn't paying us well. His wife was so wicked. In fact, somebody in church offended. You, you, do you understand what I'm talking to him? <laughs> And then so one man told me that he will sponsor me. They all went and started. And it was working well until one territorial spirit remembered to come and visit their church. And came around and hung around for some time. And then everything went down. And the man is confused. You say, bro, but this is what the Bible says. He doesn't have an encounter. All of you lift up your hand. I don't know the journey you were going to take in life. Oh. We are all smiling here now. Nobody knows the other person's tomorrow. Nobody knows the trials that will come your way. Nobody knows the challenges that will come your way. But if life happens to you, may there be an encounter that will keep here. Amen. May there be an encounter that will keep here. Amen. May you know Jesus to your return. May you know Jesus to your altar. Amen. May you know 
not hear me, you are going out. May you not hear me, you are coming in. May nothing ever shake your faith. May nothing ever shake your faith. May nothing ever shake your faith. This is the key. This is why some of us will never, 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 never. When it's working, we are there. When it's not working, we are there. That's why consistency is easy. Why? Because you met something. You're not in doubt. You're not in doubt. I'm not pastoring because I was looking for a job. He called me. Is anybody hearing me? And he saw my past, my present, my future before he called me. He's not a blind God. No, you didn't hear me. I am not a mystery to him. He saw all my negative and all my positive before he called me. Since he called me, I will enjoy my calling. Turn the fire center. Is anybody hearing what I'm talking? When he called me. Did I force him? I did my own. No, he can't call me. And there was not one day I knelt down and I said, God, what do I do for you? I wasn't looking for call. I wasn't looking for employment in the way. I didn't want to be a pastor. He called me. So now that he called me, I am his liability. You are not hearing me. Is anybody hearing me? So I, I live as if Satan doesn't exist. I just enjoy my life. Lift up your hand. I speak all by you today. From now to the day you leave this earth. May you walk in the revelations of God. May you walk in the depth of the mysteries of grace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No fear. Amen. No doubt. Amen. No unbelief. Amen. It is done. Amen. Give a clap as you get seated.